time is now. Yes, right now. We must have the whole truth. This is the true light coming to you live from live tapes. The answers to all your questions. We don't need false prophets. We don't need misinformed teachers that don't know how to teach. We don't need leaders that don't know how to lead. That's right, he's here right now with us on earth, incarnated in human form with the total truth. True, true. You have to hear it to believe it. نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الوالي الكريم وصلى الله على أنبياء أجمعين والمسيح والمحدي والمجدد لمن مرسلين Are we not the bearers of witness that nothing would exist if Allah didn't create it? And that he is alone and has no partners. And that all gratitude is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sustainer of all the boundless universes. All gratitude is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the generous eternal friend. And send salutations of Allah on all of his prophets and his apostles and on the Messiah, the anointed one and on the Mahdi, the guy, and on the Mujadda, the reformer, which was all sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send greetings and we send peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. You are now listening to The True Light with the Sayyid al-Imamisa al-Hadi al-Mahdi. In a live question and answer session. Can you tell me who Yanil is? <laughs> Yanil is an extraterrestrial being who incarnates of the 19 galaxies. And they do travel by ships, as you would call them for lack of a better word. And they've been intergalactically traveling and coming to this planet since 11,500 years ago. And Yanun is one of the masters that's been assigned to awake you people up. Because you people are a portion of ancient uh, births of the Jabariyans, as you probably don't even know what that means. Right? And some of you must be woken up. And so masters would come. The master that you saw was called Rama. If you would have gotten a closer look at him, he comes from 4,000 years before Jesus. If you would have got a closer look at him, you would have saw that he had white hair and red eyes. He's a caramel complexion, fairly thin, and his name is Rama. He visits this planet many times. He lives in Shambhala. I don't care how crazy it sounds to you, one day you all will find out it's true anyway. That in the center of your planet, there is another world in the center, there's subterranean pathways to different chambers in the center of your planet. The pyramids are entrances there, and so are the pyramids out in South America and the Nairobi Desert, and out at the Antarctic is the entrance in. And Yadin is one of the masters of the school of the birds. They call him the feathered bird. This is why in South America, when they, when they look over the sky and they see this image of this bird on the ground, that is his school. So certain arriving masters to this plane knew what school they would go to. Each galactical, what do you call it, body had their own school on this planet. Muslims uh, don't realize that throughout the Holy Quran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about angelic beings coming to earth, you have turned them because of Christianity in the 18th century into little white babies with wings when you're talking about celestial and terrestrial beings or extraterrestrial beings who have been visiting y'all for a long period of time. Because some of you are the sons and daughters of extraterrestrials who came here and you have to be brought back to power to defend this planet against the destruction by Azazel and what they refer to as Lucifer and the other 200 
fallen angels which were again extraterrestrial beings who invaded this planet 6,000 or 5,000 some odd years ago and have been ruling and have caused the masses to either hover or to go into the subterranean parts of the planet and they just come up to either ascend to the earth to teach man or they will make intergalactical communications leave and come back and this is what Elijah saw this is what Jesus said when he said he was caught up in a whirlwind in the clouds and went up the whirlwind in the clouds is the ship itself Elijah was taken up in a chariot and Enoch was translated into heaven by a chariot it's throughout the scriptures and three men visited Abraham at his tent and then one went up and the other two went on down into Sodom to try to talk Lot and his family into coming out you know these these stories that you have interpreted in the scriptures strictly as religious dogma because of the translations by the Christian churches, etc., who had no knowledge of extraterrestrials, they have turned the spiritual, the, the spiritual community of beings who have existed in other galaxies into gods or into angels and gave them a bunch of names that didn't apply to them. And so you just happened to talk, mention one, who is very powerful, Yanun, his name is, they say Yanin, it's also, it's pronounced Yanun, depending on the dialect of what galaxy you're in, the pronunciation changes. And, and the one you described was another one called Rama, who's asking you about Yanin because Yanin is a sign to give your answers about the things that you need to know in this time and the time that you've come from to be able to distinguish the 144,000 who would be those extraterrestrial beings prepare them to create that whirlwind and make that ascension out of this state which they call the rapture rising up from the earth while it goes to its turmoil with the lamb as they refer to him which is merely a symbol of a humble being from an extraterrestrial and Isa and Miriam alayhi salama was caught up between the two because he was one of the only Jabarian of his time, meaning he was the only, what well, I say Jabarian of his time, the only being of his time that an angelic being, as you call him, extraterrestrial, came down and went into a woman again like they did way back in Genesis and gave birth to this being that was partially angelic and partially man so that he could try to raise your, your spiritual consciousness, but man was not ready. So Allah Ta'ala saw fit to send after him a mortal who would be guided by a Jabarian, which was the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who would be guided by the angel Jibrail, who was an uh, extraterrestrial, because the method of reaching man through his spiritual awareness, like Isa, Jesus, didn't work. Man was wanted to kill him, and destroy him. they didn't understand what he was doing. And the more he would execute the power, of healing and things to show them that they had the same power, some of them, because that's what he said, I only was sent to a certain group, a lost sheep. I got to find a certain group of people, you know, but the people who he was not sent to, they didn't like him, they persecuted him, and in, and in turn wanted to kill him. So Allah Ta'ala saw fit to send another being, which you all call the Comforter, Azza, which was Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and have the angel visit him who would be an extraterrestrial to guide him and give him the Qur'an, the final text that will teach you about your intergalactic traveling and how you got him. It's why the Qur'an says, we sent you down to earth. See, they keep missing it. That when there's a turmoil in the garden in heaven, that we cast you down to earth in the Qur'an. From where? The angels come down from where? From floating around in the sky. No, they sent you down to Arbut, which is Earth, the blue planet. They sent you here from other galaxies. When you violated the law, intergalactical law, you was cast down here like prisoners. You all are, are away with, as you would call it. I don't know a better word for it. That you all are in, signed to a prison. Earth is a prison that you all are in. And you are people who rebel who would listen to Satan, as you call him, which was Azadila then, or Tanush. You listen to him, you follow, and you've been assigned to earth until you overcome that, until you turn and give your total reverence to Hua, Allah, 
Allah la ilaha illa huwa. But you incorporate in that, even that when you say huwa, you have to say God, Allah, God, God, Allah. You keep interjecting. You personified him and said he was master for our Muhammad or he was Yahweh ben Yahweh. You always have to do something rather than to just serve the omnipotent source of the Hawa or way is inside you, the essence of life. So now you've been assigned to this prison which is called Ardu, the blue rock earth, until you, which they say, are born again. And born again of what they say? Of the body or the spirit? Of the spirit. Y'all must be born again of the spirit. You must be transformed from being this mortal being who is destined to die back to immortality. You follow? You must become a supreme being again in order to be worthy of intergalactical traveling again. So now what has happened, the devil's seed is in the earth mixing in with the God seed as you'd have it and it's keeping y'all bound to the planet and creating new dogmas every day. New deviations from the fundamental truth and calling it religions and sects and all different types of dynamics, Sunni, Shia, Ahmadiyya, Bilalian, Black, Muslims, Hindu, Buddhist, and just creating new dogmas to keep you from seeing the straight, the Surat al Mustaqim, as they call it, the Surat al Mustaqim, the straight way of those who made the pathway through the galaxies. The Surat al when they say in the Quran, and they know Surat al Mustaqim, Surat al Ladina, and Amta alayhim, Ghayr al Mahdubi alayhim, Walla Dalim, they're telling you. I want to be guided, and they know the author of the game. I want to be guided to that way. I want to get back out of here. Surat al Ravina and Amta Alayhim. You know what I mean? That Surat of those who you are giving your grace, Allah Ta'ala. I don't want to be like those people who got the everlasting curse, who's damned to this earth forever. Well, it's all in. For those who, who deviated off that path that was leading from Malakut to Nesut and went somewhere else. Or as they translate in, in modern times, have left the path of Deen al-Islam and went into other denominations of thought. And you deviate from the path of Deen al-Islam when you deviate from the path of Mila Ibrahim. When you deviate from the religion that Allah Ta'ala gave to the Prophet Adam which was the, the, the way you should work your way back to Jannah to Idris, back out of this plane and back into Malakut, the domain of angelic beings from which most of you have come. But some people here have made an everlasting pact with a Zazila, a Zazila of Tanush, this being who ruled in, who tried to overthrow Mikael in Malakut prior to the birth of your planet as a result of that, was cast down. Some mortals have to come to him and begin to worship him in a subtle kind of way. One of his names is God. And they have taken him and called the law God and Jehovah God in, in the Akhra, etc., etc., etc. You follow? So you just happen to touch on a very sensitive subject. And you all, uh, I am here to try to bring you all back to that teaching. But I gotta start with what you understand. I gotta start giving you what you think you want so you'll learn how to think on the level of what I have to give or what you know you need. But I can't start by pouring out. I've been teaching for 20 years on earth, in and out, visiting in and out of here. Different beings speak to you at different times through me. Different, trying to answer all of your questions to prepare you for the real knowledge real information that you have to have after you get too wobbling in how great you are and how you got here and how you're Abraham and your Keter and your this, when you finish all that ego tripping, then I can get down and teach you the truth about things and prepare those who are supposed to leave here to prepare so when the ship does come, they can go. Do you follow? And I know that sounds crazy, but he wants to make me sound crazy. That's why he made movies like Star Trek. Because he knew this knowledge. The devil, he believes, he knows these things. And that's why he saturates the television with about a, a bunch of things like fiction, so that when the final truth comes, I say, your whole concept of religion in the Bible is wrong. You don't even know what you're talking about. You're talking about intergalactical beings, you're not talking about angels. 
You're talking about the ultimate source of all existence. You're not talking about God and Jehovah. Those are just expressions. When you say Allah, you're saying El Hua. Yahoo, oh he who is. And you cannot define him while still confined to this prison called the physical body on earth. Alright? You have been listening to the unshakable guidance and teachings of our Sayyid Al Imam Isa Al Hadi Al Mahdi, the undisputed man of our times. Now let us return to the true light with Asaid al Imam Isra al Hadi al Mahdi. Remember, you are the light and you have the power over all things. It's amazing. <laughs> this is amazing to me to hear people from this planet <laughs> asking questions about such intricate things. <laughs> it is really amazing. I don't, you don't even hear yourself. That's what's so funny. You don't, you don't even hear yourself. You hear yourself talk to me, but you don't even understand half the things you're asking. And it's amazing to find that the spiritual people here are beginning to wake up. It is not about a water religion. You know what I mean by a water religion? When they dip you in some water, and say you're baptized, or some, or you or go to Mecca and then say I'm a Muslim, where it's just the physical aspect of the deed, it's amazing that y'all are now probing into the esoteric part of your existence and trying to get a better understanding of the real you and not the synthetic you that you call your body. It's a wonderful day. El Hadi. I want to ask a question. First of all, wait, let me correct him. El Hadi is my father's name. <laughs> Imam. Okay. Imam. What is it, what is meant? Lately, I've been getting the flash in front of me, the white fog, like I'll be standing or I'll be in a certain place and I'll see a white, like a white, or uh, like a... White a, mist. A mist, yeah. A, how do you know that? Because I know what it is. A mist in front of me and it just comes and it stays there for a second. Then I, it'll go. Then I, I can move, and I, I'll go to another place, and I, my mind just be, you know, I don't be thinking about anything in particular. All of a sudden, it flash in front of me, but I can't really, you know, figure out. You haven't had, see, the thing is, you're looking, at, you're looking at beings who are here in the Earth's atmosphere trying to reverse the negative flow of current that's here, okay? You can't assimilate them because you haven't developed the, the inner part of you. You're developing, but you have not developed the inner part of you to be able to focus on them and take shape the way you do physical things. Meaning, human beings are under the impression that when they look at something, they really see it, and they don't. Anything you look at, if you look at the guy's head in front of you, you are looking at a reflection of light to the brain. You're not looking at the object. You follow that? You're looking out at something, it reflects back into the, on, in the brain, and then you decipher its color, its shape, its form, its size, etc. Okay? You have not been able to do that yet with the spiritual world. Sometimes the beings will personify for you, or incarnate for you, but now you have to learn how to incarnate them, and then you will see them, and they'll get in your way. Because <laughs> you'll find the abundance of beings surrounding this earth plane trying from different galaxies to keep you from, you people from being destroyed by the cherubim. And we're trying to wake you up soon enough to get you back, but uh, it seems almost impossible. So many people have learned to love the cherubim as opposed to the seraphim. Okay? Well, why we, we are the, the people of soldiers, why, I mean, I know, uh, we, how could we, why would we allow ourselves to, why are we in this condition? Why can't what's in us, the inner being, be brought forth? And the greatness that Allah who subhanahu who walked all of put upon us. Our ancestors, these are things that our ancestors did. And we are the children, our children's children. No, no. Your ancestors, let me correct you. Your ancestors were also being visited by beings to try to help them, because in, in the realm that they were in, they had their degree of devilishment also. You follow Lot, don't forget Lot, 
turned against Abraham and went down to Sodom and Gomorrah because he thought it was a better place to be. So he turned against the village of peace and went into the city of New York, to the village, <laughs> in a figure of speech, and wants to live in the village with those kind of people. It's been going on for a long period of time. And beings have been trying, but see, what is long to y'all is short to us. What 6,000 years is, a, is, a, is, a, is less than a day to us. The whole information of your whole planet could be absorbed in a couple of minutes by any master. All the information of your whole planet, you're developing rapidly, much more rapidly than you're supposed to. Recently this week, the snowstorm, was there any significance of the thunder and the lightning? Yes. If you would read a book that I've written called the Book of Revelation 4, I explained last year to expect these things. Some of the people in the class now, I told them this is the worst weather you're going to have in, in a long time. And what has happened is there's a clash of currents in the universe now. This is going to start crazy again. I have to keep saying that because people think I'm nuts. I don't mind being nuts. They thought Jesus was nuts. But there's a council that meets on all of the different planets that are in your solar system and outside your solar system. All right, your planet is lined up for evaluation next. So you have a lot of intergalactical traveling taking place here now. People coming in and going into the center of your planet. That's why they're saying there's so many UFO sightings all of a sudden. This is why people are turning back to the church. People are getting so spiritual all of a sudden. Everybody talking about the spirit and the Holy Ghost and being born again and being saved and becoming Muslim and becoming black Jew and becoming Hindu and becoming Swami and there's a yogi here and there's a yoga that. That is the work of the masses preparing you. When that happens, the currents go out. That's why all the prophecies say the sky shall be blackened and there shall be earthquakes and storms and the moon shall turn like red, turn into a ball of fire. This is the time. There's a galactical alignment. Y'all had a solar alignment a couple of weeks ago. They didn't even tell you all that. They put it on the news after it happened. They never told you why. Because I told y'all that because there is no North Pole, every time the elders enter, the mothership comes over the North Pole, that magnetic thing, because those solar light reflections at the North Pole, those are ships coming in. And they throw your planet off. Your, your planet is off its axis already. It's 23 and a half degrees off now because of ships entering into the center. In the center of this planet, there's a sun. The diameter of it is 6,000 miles. And each layer of your sun, your planet, is not a solid. You couldn't be a solid and be 6 or trillion tons of weight with all the metals. This planet is, is, a, is not a solid, it's hollow. And in the center of it, there's, a, there's a, another whole empire which you all refer to as Atlantis or Lemuria. All right, there's two of them. They went for so long, so I'm not, I'm not going to start explaining the last thing. But the weather is out now because there's beings coming through and they're interfering with your layers. Your ozone is thrown off now. So you're going to have abstract weather. You think it's funny now? I'll give it two more weeks and see what happens. It's going to be so cold in March, it's going to be ridiculous. Your time belt is off. Your planet is working on a time belt. Time belt means you have ticks in your time. You follow? You have been calculating the ticks, but is ignoring the rest. You know anything about music? You know there's a beat and a rest, a beat and a rest. But when you're looking at your clock and the devil shrewdly put batteries in to take out the ticks, because you were going tick, 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 tick. But in between those ticks, there was a rest that you were not counting. Instead of being 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 6 seconds, you really had 26 or 27 minutes. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm 48 minutes going at the same time. The beings that I'm speaking about, intergalactical beings, move on the rest of your time. It's a counter world, a fourth dimension, that's linked to this three-dimensional world you're in. And when they're making communication to set up the council, which you refer to in the Bible as the 24 elders around the throne with the four beasts or in Ezekiel, that same council that has been coming here since the beginning of your planet, right? When they're coming 
when other galaxies here is have a meeting on this, on whether or not to let this planet destroy itself. This is what it is. You people have gotten to the point where you are about to destroy yourself, and they're trying to save you, it says in Revelation. What about those who have the seal of the Father on them? The Master says, hold back the winds in Revelation. Don't destroy them until we get there. But you won't come. It's right in the book. Don't be spoiled until we get those who have the seal, but you won't come. Some of you are spiritual beings, I gotta tell you. When the sons of the Almighty came down centuries ago and went into the door of the man, they gave birth to what you call the Philians or Jebarian. Supernatural beings who have now mingled amongst men so well that they forgot who they are, except for that dormant feeling that keeps making them say, why does everything happen to me? Why am I different? Why, I, why am I not enjoying this party the way they are? Why do I not want to get drunk and smoke people like they do? Why, do I, why am I sitting in church saying, I don't believe that, that white man on that cross is Jesus? Why is something happening different? And other people in the same room are sitting there and accept anything. They just and you look at them like, how can you accept anything anybody says? Well, if you're one of those people, they always going say, why me? Why when they run, I'm the one that falls. Every ski, I get the broken ski. You follow? Why am I the being in all this energy? Because the devil has a concentrated effort on your destruction. Because he knows that you are a Jebelian. That you're from a, you're an intergalactical being. You're part human and part extraterrestrial. He knows that. And you cannot, you're, like Jesus said, I'm caught up in two worlds. He said, he, he was having a problem. He said, my spirit is willing to test my flesh. That is so weak. You follow? All of these collaborations of time, the alignment of the universe, the beings coming through, is why your weather's out. And it sounds like a science fiction movie, because that's what he wants it to sound like, but it's true. I'll tell you some things that will wake you up. The headaches, the one-eye headaches. You know what I'm talking about? That you get in that one eye is aggravating you, that nervous tension that you can't stop rocking, flopping your leg all of a sudden. The inconsistency with time. Like, it's Wednesday. What happened to Tuesday? Is this happened to some of you people in there? Well, that's because you are out of whack with what's going on. You're breaking your time barrier. You're not a tool no more. We are here for you, but you won't come. We can't take you back without teaching you first who you are and how you got here. And I'm not talking about Abraham and Jesus, those, the whole Bible story we learned in a second. That's your history. You got know, you know, one of the shortest histories of all everybody. We've been just in the 76 trillion years. We've been incarnating the new planet since 11,500 years when we first built Atlantis there. And it was mortals from the sea of the Nephilim who caused Atlantis to sink. A gap to the subterranean world which is beyond the understanding. Now, now but you've got to relearn who you are and how you got here so you can get out of here and leave these mortals here. Because this planet is destined to destroy itself. And they're going to take you with them. And if your spirit is not developed far enough, you will be a premature birth. You'll be caught in the destruction of this planet. You have been listening to The True Light. A question and answer session with Sir Saeed Ali Mamisa Al Hadi Al Mahdi. Do you want to know the truth? Can you face the truth? Be sure to read the most dynamic books in history, authored by Sir Saeed Ali Mamisa Al Hadi Al Mahdi, on such subjects as what is a Muslim? Where is the tabernacle of the Most High? Should Muslims observe the Sabbath? Was Christ really crucified? Who was the comforter? Now let us return to the true light with Asaid al Imam Isa al Hadi al Mahdi. Remember, you are the light and you have the power over all things. But um, the other thing was if you are if you are spiritual being, then what is your purpose here? Mine? Yeah, yours and any other. I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher who comes to get my students 
and prepare y'all for the war. We've had several wars against Azazo people before, and we've won. And every time they went somewhere else and colonized, now they've colonized here and they've gotten you. I've got to come and separate you from them and turn you back into spiritual people so we can conquer him, which is whom you all call Satan. And prepare you all to go back to Malakut. Malakut, what do you say? Now, what is that? There's three, there's three domains. And then there's lower and above. Nesut, Malakut, and Lahut going up. Nesut is the abode of Humane, which is what y'all are, the ones on earth. Malakut is the abode of Malaik, angelic beings, as you call them. And Lahut is the throne of the Omnipotent with the seven veils. You follow? Okay. Solid, liquid, and gas. Okay. You're in solid. Okay. The angels are in liquid, mm -hmm. and the Almighty is in a form of gas. Okay. All right? Now the liquid can become vaporized into gas or hardened into a solid. Now, I'm here to turn the solid back into a vape, into a liquid, and then back into a gas. You follow? But they're so intermingled <laughs> with the mortals here, it's hard to find who's who anymore. They do, they're so well trained to act like the devil and live like him and want like him and love like him and lust like him, and it's hard to find the good ones from the bad ones. Now, it's quite a confusing job when you meet people, you think they're spiritual beings, you start teaching them, and they're really physical, nothing but physical, total physical, and it becomes bewildering. How would I know for myself? You do know it for yourself. You already know if you're a spiritual being because you're not content here. When you look up at the sky, you get to stare. When they discuss UFO, it doesn't frighten you. You want to be, you want to be picked up by them. It's a difference. Other people say, not me, I'm not going to go up by a And then there's another people that say, why don't I see them? You even look up at night out of your window and say, why can't I see one? When I've taken the congregation from this community, I said, you want me to prove you that they exist? I took hundreds of them to the mountains and said, now watch, they're going to come from that direction. And I called them and they came. And they hold it above them. They saw with their own eyes. But they can call anybody crazy if they want. I don't, as long as I got company in this and stand, I feel good. <laughs> but they saw with their own eyes the ship. And they, I told them what to chant, and they chanted, and the ship came close, beamed light, and took off. I said, that, those people are waiting to take you. That was it. That's my job. And you have got to accept it before he realizes how dangerous I am and then I'll have to leave. And many times as we are sent to you, you either turn us into gods or you call us prophets, you've got all kind of crazy names you make up because the men here cannot follow another what appears to be mortal without making them some type of a deity. Because mm -hmm. they can't see to themselves, I mean, I'm a man too, so he must be God. <laughs> and then they can see themselves as, as students or neophytes as you would have it. Learning, they don't, they have to turn you into a god or something. But we would be gods compared to what the powers that you once had and that we have now, we would be gods compared to that. But you have the same power dormant. The same way your fingers there can play a piano. Right? Now, everybody can. But everybody has the ability to, who has working fingers to play the piano. Only a piano player knows that though. And they say, well, I, anybody can play this thing. You already know that as a piano player, though. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Sometimes what happens to me is like there's this force that comes out, and it's like really bright and kind of warm. Yes, sir. But I can't seem to control when it comes out and when it doesn't. I know that when it does come out is when I kind of left myself or my self-consciousness. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it'll be there. All right. Uh, and yes, I notice that yes. when that happens, whatever I need to have happen, it happens. Well, that's like you. That's the real you. Whenever, and, and you want to learn to control that? Right. You take and you put your hands in front. Everybody can't do this. You put your hands in front of your face and you clap your hands until you create a hollow sound, not a slap. It's a hollow sound. 
Not just see any difference? Okay. And once you've done that, you put your hands down on your lap and say to yourself, relax and let go. And just drop. Relax and let go. And just drop. And you feel your body start to relax in your hands from where you slapped them, where you brought energy to them, start to tingle because the blood going back into the cells. Because that blood is carrying carry oxygen energy. And you start to feel it move to the center of your body. And that, that feeling can start to come out. Then you stop it. It's exercise. You don't let it go. You stop it and you get up and go about your business. And you practice it a little bit every day. And you let it come out a little further each day. And then you will control how well it travels and where it goes. But I, I noticed that other people can see it. Yeah, of course they can. But I didn't think, I thought, at first I thought only I could see it. Because that's easy. Then you don't have to explain it. <laughs> it's so much easier. <laughs> because no, when people see things, they say, hey, what's that? And then you got to say, I don't know. <laughs> like I said earlier, you don't take on the responsibility for things that you are. You refuse them. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to explain that. They just leave it alone. So you would have to pursue the meaning of it in order for you to explain it. And that you don't feel like being bothered with. So you're, you're frightened about what it might really be. Well, now you know it's really the essence of you. It's the higher of you, the real you. Now it's become familiar with it. And when you hear that high pitched sound, it usually precedes it in your ear, that little high pitched sound, move your body to vibrate at that point. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. Usually before it'll happen, listen, you hear like a high buzzing sound above you. Right? Move your body up to that point. Sit and, and place yourself at a point where you have a level where you say, I'm at the middle, say it in your mind, I'm at the middle or I'm at the bottom or the top. And then envision the, that sound above you and pull yourself up to that point with that sound. You understand? And it can open up and you'll see the ship. If they're, if they're convinced that it won't frighten you, that's also part of that fear. When the adrenaline raises, the scent of adrenaline, which is the killer instinct in human beings, will frighten the angelic beings away. Because man does have in him a killer instinct. And that scent comes up when the adrenaline moves. And all creatures know that you're about to kill with or without reason. So even angelic beings withdraw when that fear comes out of you. When you get afraid, they move away from you. Okay? Imam Isa, I want you to uh, further elaborate on that word cherubim and where they came from and what their purpose here is. You want me to or would you like me to? Yeah, I, I would like you to. Oh, is <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Before the creation of humane beings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created a realm called Malakut. This realm was inhabited by two races of beings that had various species. These two races were called, in your present day language, cherub and seraphim. They were what you refer to as angelic beings. But just like you have the two races on earth today, which came out of that, you follow? Prior to this, there was two on a spiritual plane. The ruler of this, or the Khalifa, of that realm was called Mikhail, which is Melchizedek, or El Khidr, which comes from the word Mik, to be like, Mithlik Lillahi, to be like Allah. He was the angel who ruled all the archangels. Okay? And they ruled this, this abode called Malakut prior to the creation of Adam in the physical form. And then, certain beings within the race of the cherub wanted to rule that domain because Michael spent so much time behind the fifth veil of Lahut, which which starts another whole conversation which I try not to go to. 
and rebelled against Michael's rule, which caused a battle in the domain of Malakut, which y'all call the Battle of the Angels. You see? And the angels that stayed with Michael, the seraphim from his race, were successful over the cherubim. And the cherubim were utterly removed from the plane of Malakut, except some of them who did not follow the wicked one, which is not who you know as a Zazil or a Bliss. This is before him. Okay? What Mikhail did was he took one of these young cherubim as an example, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the tree as an example of good and evil. He put one of them in the midst of the seraphim to see if they could repent, you know, save this race by raising him in truth, the light of the green light as opposed to the red light. They're two colors. Okay. This being that they raised became known he was from amongst a race called the Jinn. He was called Jan, the father of the Jinn. They were the Kafiruna originally who covered the truth about the laws of Malakut prior to Iblis. This child Jan was from amongst the species of cherubim. The father? Okay. <clears throat> so, after they took this child, Jan, and put him amongst the seraphim to rear him in knowledge to reform them. But this being raised up again when Allah Ta'ala confronted the angels up there, which are the seraphim, that he was going to create a Khalifa for the next abode, the next evolutionary stage, which is called Nasa, which you're on now, the planet Earth. And he would create him in spirit first, and then give him a perfected body, and he would be able to procreate like Allah. Because the angels couldn't do that. Procreate, have children. But Iblis, being from the Kafirun could do that. They had the power of the red light. Fire can make more fire, in other words. All right. But the seraphim were from the light of Allah. They didn't. He merely thought them into existence. They were lesser degrees. You have been listening to The True Light, a question and answer session with Asaid Al Mamisa Al Hadi Al Mahdi. If you would like a cassette copy of this week's True Light broadcast, send $5 to True Light, 719 Bushwick Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, 11221, and request tape number 19. We will continue with True Light after this musical intermission. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. لا إله إلا الله لا
ارسلناك الا رحمه للعالمين صدق الله العظيم يوم مولد الكريم Return to the true light with Sayyid Al Imam Isa Al Hadi Al Mahdi. Remember, you are the light, and you have the power over all things. So this being at a youthful age raised up again and rallied the other cherubim that stayed behind. You follow? The ones who were not totally destroyed, and they caused the vote in heaven a second time about the birth of a being called Adam to you. Because he told them that they were greater than this being Adam because they were created of Narun Salun. Narun and not Nur. But the cherubim were Nar and the seraphim were Nur, the light. And Nair is the fire, you see. When he, Iblis, who was called Azazila, when he was cast down, and Lucifer, as you call him, raised up, they questioned Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Mikael and said, where are you about to create another mischief maker? He was referring to beings like his descendants who caused mischief and shed blood? The Lord's answer was through Mikhail, I know what you do not know. You see? So this being, Jan, was very vexed at the creation of a being now of what he considered a lesser nature. He was going to be created of thin, of clay, shapes of silent, Masnoon in fashion from ham and black mud. And they couldn't, he said, I am better than him. He was big chested with pride. I am greater than him. And the angrier he became, the more of the sun came from him. Simon is when a person is 
huffing and puffing out of anger, the wind, the heat that comes from them is a poisonous thing that even you do when you get mad. When you go, Shh, I hate this person. This is the sun in people. That's why they call him Uncle Sam when he sets out and sends men to go on the other side of the world to kill other people and they call it the war. Uncle Sam, Uncle Samun. This is a principle he's been using since he's come before he came to this planet. Okay? Now this may sound crazy to y'all, but I'm sorry. So did the television ten, uh, 50 years ago. One day you'll find out this is all true. I'm telling you, because I was there. I'm an extraterrestrial and incarnated. I don't want you to, I want you to think I'm crazy because that's what keeps me alive. <laughs> the fact that people think, think I'm crazy, they leave me alone. And that's good. So this being, Jan, who was Mono Kafirun from the Kafir, stored in Malakut, in the, one of the lower planes of it, because each domain, the three domains, has upper and lower planes or dimensions within dimensions. Seven to the seventh power of seven, as you have it. And certain of these angels, 210, 10 were the ones that survived. They call them the unholy angels, right? And 200, he reformed there with his anger against this destined being, Adam, that he felt he was better than. So when Allah blew of his roof into the soul, uh, his roof, his soul into the nest of Adam, and Adam became a living soul, Allah told the angels, prostrate, all of you, seraphim, cherubim, everybody, prostrate to this new created being. And they all did, except Jan. He was ballast, rebellious, because he was from the Kafirun, from the seed of the old cherubim. He refused to do it. And Allah cast them all down here. To earth. You see? And Satan, as he then became known, taking on a form of a peacock at certain times, an old person another time, set out to deceive man. Man now had to prove that he was worthy of the throne that Allah Ta'ala created him on in heaven. You call it heaven or the Garden of Eden where rivers flow. And his mating, the maidens waiting in heaven are your brother and sister angelic beings that you were created amongst the seraphim. They're the ones they call the servants that will serve you in heaven. They are the seraphim. They're the ones that protect, but Allah put children on the gate of heaven between the plane of what you refer to the plane of force and the physical plane, the transition from Malakut to Nassau, he put a cherubim on each east, on, on the eastern end of it, the entrance back in to the Kaaba and up. So that man cannot just reach in because of his power and take out the key to eternal life and live forever in this ignorant state. But he said, from time to time, I will send warnings to you. And they will bring messages and signs to you that you may come back and that you may remember who you are and rekindle the Lord in you that you may re-enter into the abode of Malakut where you, Adam, was originally created. You see? So the cherubim are now vowed in earth to conceive every time the woman seed conceives and they vow to prove to Allah that man is not worthy of the throne, Ashr, that Allah gave him in paradise. And the seraphim, who are headed by Mikhail, have come to your aid many times. The third angel that visited Abraham was Mikhail. The one who visited Moses at the junction of the two now was Mikhail. The one who sent the dove down to Asa and Miriam was Mikhail. See, remember Gabriel said, and we, when we came to Mary, Mikhail was there also. And then Gabriel took on the form of the Bashar the human being with skin, that he can go into her to conceive this being that is half seraphim and half mortal, which is called Jesus, and you turn him into a god. So what you've done is you've taken the extraterrestrial beings and they become terrestrial when they come here. 
They are really celestial beings who become terrestrial here, and you call them angels and gods and all kind of things that make you feel good. <laughs> so, so you understand now who the cherubim are? The cherubim are the kafir from prior to the creation of Adam. Okay? Thank you. اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم صدق الله العظيم ربنا أتمن لنا نورنا وأكفر لنا على كل شيء قدير. This is from the 66th surah of the Holy Quran, the 8th verse. And reads, O oh, sustainer complete for us our light.